Hey guys, I've got some new artwork for you today. This is going to be the first video in a little series. This video is going to cover the sketching and thumbnail and kind of generating ideas. And the second video is going to be resolving those ideas and pushing the concept to a finished illustration. So uh, I hope you guys like this kind of format. Let me know in the comments because uh, I thought this would slow it down a little bit and maybe you guys could like see a little bit more specific elements of you know moment to moment what i'm doing so let me know if that sounds good and it's based on some of your feedback that uh, you you want stuff to be a little bit slower so um so yeah thank you guys so much for watching as always thank you for all my subscribers and all the comments you guys leave and feedback it means a lot and it's really helpful for me to uh to know what you guys want to see more of and what's working and what's not working so if you're new here also just go check out my videos and if you like what i do please consider subscribing i really 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 appreciate it so so yeah i hope you guys like this video and uh yeah thanks again guys let's go so we'll start out just by going over what my idea was in a very broad sense my idea is a castle on an island um in a kind of sheltered lake in a almost like a Scotland type environment or Scandinavian like Norway or, or something like that. So that's a very broad general kind of brief I gave myself. Obviously there's a lot that can be interpreted from that brief with just a castle on an island. There's a million things you can do with that. And that's kind of the point of this kind of really loose thumbnail phase where I'm just laying in the most basic possible shapes to give myself a sense of the overall silhouette and major shape arrangement. And as soon as I have that stuff marked on the page, as soon as I see some kind of idea in my head that I like at all, I'll just move to the next sketch because it's about, it's about this whole process. It's not about any one sketch. It's about just getting as many ideas as possible down for me because I know I'm gonna go back to them. So I don't feel bad about leaving it really messy and you know, kind of crappy looking because I know it's the whole process is just part of the, uh, this is just one of the steps to get to the end goal of having a bunch of viable sketches to choose from. Now this brief I gave myself is about the castle, it's not just random. I know it seems kind of generic and, and a little bit lame, but it's for my personal project and it's it's a much smaller part of a larger setting that I'm designing. So when I'm thinking about storytelling and world building, I like to do a bunch of concepts of like almost innocuous points of interest or just, you know, landmarks we might see in that much larger setting. And I use those collectively to give the world and that setting its own identity. And the more I develop that with these little landmarks and just explorations, the more rich and real that becomes in my mind. And it really gives the place its own identity and becomes real to me in my mind. The more I do this, that effect just snowballs and eventually you can visualize this place and whenever you need to make more art for that setting you've established it so well in your mind that you'll know what to make that fits in that setting after you do enough exploration and it becomes more vivid and rich in your mind with details about what kind of architecture is there what's the climate like and what the cultures are like that is that's a really cool feeling when it almost feels like a real place and when you're creating environments or characters for that area it feels almost as real as somewhere in the real world and like i said some people might find this subject matter a little bit tired or just overdone but for me i'm a huge fantasy nerd and i love tolkien and and classic kind of fantasy archetypes and themes and i don't feel the need to recreate that i'm i love castles and almost just taking what we have from our history and just exaggerating a little bit to make it fit in my fantasy world that's really compelling to me and i've never been super keen on really crazy over the top magical fantasy stuff everywhere and like everything's astronomically massive and you know I've, I've never been 
someone who pushes my stuff that far into high fantasy and that's just a personal taste I have. I like things to be a little bit more grounded and I want the stories I'm telling to be compelling enough to bring some believability to these settings and I think having the setting being a little bit more grounded just reinforces that believability and plausibility and I also think keeping things grounded in my opinion I like grounded designs and things that are that we can see our reality in and our history because I think we just feel more connected to it and because it's it's something that we can relate to our own history as a, as a human race and we have all these rich cultures full of amazing architecture and artwork already I find that stuff really inspiring so I like to bring that kind of stuff into my designs. I don't necessarily feel the need to reinvent the wheel and go super over the top with everything. I also just think that if I am going to create a really crazy, um, really over the top design that is really pushing the fantasy, I like to reserve those designs and I don't want them to be overly present because I think having those designs is especially cool if it's rare to see if everything in your world is that crazy and that massive and over the top and magical i think it diminishes the impact that it has because it's everywhere so reserving those designs having them really be impactful and awesome i think is a good strategy to to consider and obviously this doesn't apply to every ip this is just my personal work and my ip that i created for myself I'm just designing stuff that appeals to me, obviously, and and that's just kind of how I think about it. I like to have more grounded designs, and I like to tell stories within within those more uh, simplistic and rugged and sort of roughly hewn environments. I want to say as much as I possibly can in the most simple way, and that's something I'm always trying to do. It's a real struggle for me. I think it's that's one of the hardest things I find with concept art is I want to keep things as simple as possible. It's something I'm always trying to remind myself. That's just the kind of art that always appeals to me. And I'm always trying to improve my artwork to be more simple and just not overworked in any aspect. So now I'm just going through my uh, really loose thumbnails that I, that I put down and I'm starting to define some more details and resolve some some shapes and add secondary shapes and you know decide where the structures are and where natural elements are i'm just trying to define all that stuff so that in the next stage uh those questions are already answered and it just it will make the whole process smoother whenever i have my thumbnails all on the page really loose like just basic shapes i always am really eager and excited to go to my favorite ones first and start sketching on those and then this kind of this stage really clarifies what you actually want to design because you might you might start working on them and find that none of them are the way you want and you might need to go and do another page of thumbnails with this new perspective you gain from realizing that some of them aren't working and why. I'm pushing some of them to be much crazier than others. I want a range to choose from. I want to at least have some options for some really crazy castles like on giant like precarious cliffs or that are seem like they're balancing and very like precarious and about to fall over i wanted to just have those options just to see it and make sure that i'm pretty sure I, that's not where i want to go but i want to at least see those options and work on the sketch to a point that it's actually viable the whole goal of this page of thumbnails is i want to get all the thumbnails to a quality where they to an equal quality where they're all actually viable options that I can consider. I don't want to just draw for the sake of filling the page. I want them actually to all have something I like about them that I can take an objective look at and decide what I like and what I definitely don't like. And then maybe I can combine some ideas to make one sketch just the obvious winner. And then that's the one I'll move forward with. And in terms of the brush I'm using, I'm just using a, a round brush with a little bit of a kind of grainy texture because it feels like a pencil to me when i draw on paper i like to be pretty loose and like i almost 
scribble things. I do a mix of line drawing and value drawing at the same time. So I, I just pick a brush that feels kind of like a pencil. I think it's actually a default Photoshop brush, but I'm not sure. But um, but you, it doesn't matter what brush you use for this because it's just a sketch. So you could use like a you could use the default round brush. It can be seen as a bad habit, but every time I every time I'm creating a new concept, I'm kind of trying something new that I haven't tried, and and I think in some regards I should just stick with what I know I like. But I kind of have this weird tendency to always feel like I want to see if there's something I like better. But this this particular brush and this technique is something that I do often because I I know I. I always kind of like the results and how it feels and, and I usually like how it looks at the end. And in terms of the quality of your sketches and how they they actually look aesthetically, if you're a student or you're just trying to practice drawing, don't let yourself get discouraged by how your sketches look. I would just say focus 100% on the idea and the design and communicating your idea and your story that you want to tell because the actual quality of your lines and the nice mark making of sketching that just comes with time and practice and it's not something that you can force into your drawing that will just happen naturally as you practice more everyone has their unique marks that they make because everyone's muscle memory is different and so you'll slowly develop your own it's it's not something that you can see another artist and try and mimic their marks that they make because then you're not focused primarily on your design which you should be and then you're just more focused on making nice looking sketches but that artist that you're mimicking they were focused on their design and you won't be able to reach their quality by forcing that kind of thing. You, you need to just let it happen naturally and just focus on your ideas and your design skills, trying to communicate that and the quality of your lines and your sketches that will just come naturally over time. And that's kind of one of the biggest tells of student work is if you're trying to just mimic uh, you know, mark making or have your stuff aesthetically look like someone else, it's usually pretty obvious to any anyone who's looking at your portfolio who's a professional and it's much more appealing to see someone just communicating ideas even if your sketches don't look like nice yet showing that you have the ability to thoughtfully generate ideas quickly and efficiently and communicate things clearly in your sketchbook is really valuable so i encourage you guys to focus on that and when I when I was starting out, the reason I'm saying all this is because I was that guy who was trying to make my sketches look like all my favorite artists. My designs were not strong and I almost did it backwards and I wish I hadn't. I was focused on improving my shading and rendering and, you know, making my sketches look loose and cool. My designs overall were pretty weak and it was a weak point for me and it was only it was only after practicing for a couple of years that I really realized that my designs needed a lot of work and I just wasn't a strong enough designer. I realized I wanted to really improve in that aspect and it, I had to let go of my ego that I just had to let it be okay that my sketches look crappy while I'm while I'm just practicing and getting better. Letting go of that pride and just leaving crappy sketches in your sketchbook and moving on is hard, but once you actually start doing it regularly and it gets easier to just leave it as is and move on to the next one and not feel like you have to fix everything and make everything perfect, it's a very liberating feeling and once you get in the mindset of just creating more and more and more and practicing more and more and more instead of trying to get in there and fix everything and make it perfect, that's such a good feeling. And uh, it, it's hard to let go of that pride at first, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. And part of generating thumbnails like this is learning from each thumb that came before, just building off your ideas that way. And each one you do kind of unlocks a new path you can take for the next one. And that's why doing so many is so valuable. I mean, you could do these all day and you could keep coming up with new ideas and unlocking new pathways that you didn't see at first, just because you're seeing stuff 
coming onto the page that you can build off that you, you didn't think about uh, before you actually had anything to look at. So that's why like when you're doing these, I, I would recommend what I usually do is I give myself a block of time, like give myself a couple hours to do thumbnails and I just do as many as I possibly can in that block of time. But once that time is over, I I have to choose one and move on because especially in a production setting and just in general, just to be efficient, you can't just keep doing them forever. Eventually you have to move on and make decisions. Find a balance of time where you can create enough to generate like a lot of really good ideas that you like, but then give yourself a cutoff time that this is the time where I have to choose one and move forward. Now in my next video, I, was, I wasn't sure if I was gonna share this, but I think I will. In the next video, I actually did do a second round of thumbnails for this idea because i felt like i could maybe push the scale and push for some crazier ideas just to know what that looks like i was pretty sure i didn't want like i saw some ideas in this page i really like and i was pretty sure that one of these sketches was the one i wanted to do these didn't take me very long so i had some extra time so i figured maybe i'll just do another round and just push it a little bit farther to see if there's anything there that appeals to me and that's a good thing to do uh, especially when you're working is like i've said this in other videos pushing stuff really far way farther than you think it should be especially at work it feels like art directors always end up going for that one where you've pushed it really really far and I think that just comes from instinctually we always dial things back more than we think we are there's actually a lot more room to push uh for crazier things and usually it t takes just trying it and in your mind you think you're going way too far but in reality you're just you're pushing it just far enough that now it's actually become really cool so i think uh it's worthwhile at least exploring and just see what it looks like if you push stuff way too far it seems and just see what that actually looks like you might be surprised and find that it's actually really cool or just spawns an idea for maybe you can push some aspects of the design that far but retain some of the more grounded aspects from your earlier explorations so now i'm just wrapping up these these last few and yeah so this is my first page of ideas and i saw some that were pretty appealing and i and by the way like i i did have references on a page on my second monitor for these and that's very important i i i want to emphasize that you should be drawing with reference. And that doesn't mean like staring at it and trying to draw exactly what you're seeing. Often I keep my references closed and I only open them and take a look at them and study them and then close it because I don't want too much one-to-one -one influence coming into my designs. I just want to understand what I'm looking at and see what parts of that I can extract and use it to inspire my design. Also, when you're designing stuff like castles or architecture, having at least like a rudimentary understanding of how those things work so that you can bring a degree of believability to your design is important. And I'm not a castle expert, but I at least want to learn enough about how they're constructed and why to at least hint at those aspects in my design. And then if someone ever asked me how the why the castle is designed this way, at least I could justify it in some way. Like, oh, here's the keep, here's the outer wall, here's like the stables and the blacksmith and where all that stuff sits in the castle. Just having a rough understanding of that stuff just to give it some believability. But it doesn't mean you have to be an expert on stuff. You just have to be able to justify it uh, for the story you wanna tell. So, and maybe I'll just end by saying if you are getting discouraged with your sketching and your drawing ability and your your aspirations are to be a professional artist something that kind of keeps me motivated is that everybody struggles on their level it's not like once you become a professional everything goes smoothly and everything you make looks great in your eyes you still create stuff that doesn't work or that looks really bad and you'll still have moments where you feel like you can't figure it out. And I often have days where I feel like I forgot how to draw and, and paint and I'm frustrated and I can't seem to make anything work. The difference between that while you're learning and that when you're a professional is a professional has just had enough experience and practice that there's just 
fewer setbacks and there's fewer mistakes being made that need to be fixed. It's not about physically going faster and doing everything perfectly. It's just about knowing based on your past failures and experiences, which routes not to take. And so you can avoid a lot of those pitfalls. And that's what, that's the difference between a professional. Just keep that in mind that every time something goes wrong for you in your art, and every time you're having a bad day, it's just an experience that's going to allow you to identify those mistakes in the future and know how to avoid them, basically. Creating art and telling stories is a wonderful pursuit. The moments of breakthroughs and uh, improvement, feeling that your story that you're telling is rich and developed and, and you can actually visualize it in your mind. For me, that's the most fulfilling uh, thing in the world and it makes all those pitfalls and roadblocks worth it. The most stressed out I've ever been in my life was because of art but it's also the happiest moments of my life are because of it as well and and that's just because it means so much to me and and that's what makes all those those uh low moments worth it because that if if there were no low moments you really just wouldn't appreciate uh the breakthroughs nearly as much
So that's it for this one, guys. Keep your eyes open for the second part of this. It should be very soon. I've done, the artwork is done. I just have to uh, edit the video. So yeah, that should be coming really soon. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. It really means a lot and I hope you guys like this. Please let me know if, if you want to see things broken up this way. I think it was much easier to talk about the art because it's moving a little bit slower. And I do see some of you guys want me to do real time stuff again. I do plan to do that. I just want to reassure you. But the reason I, I haven't is just because like just straight up because it's really hard to create concepts and come up with ideas and think while I'm talking. So I'm just worried that it'll be too dry and boring, but maybe um, maybe if I do something that's really within my comfort zone that I can kind of autopilot, maybe I can actually design and explain what I'm doing at the same time. So I, I do wanna do real-time stuff. I think it's a good idea. So, uh, so don't worry, I, I'm, I'm not abandoning that at all. So. so yeah, thank you guys so much as always. I really appreciate all the support and I'll see you guys in the next video, bye.